When the iconic Messerschmitt Bf 110 twin-engined heavy fighter started to be outclassed in the early part of World War II by Allied fighters, Germany looked for a replacement. The first attempt, the Messerschmitt Me 210, wasn't all that great. Its development, the Me 410, was considerably better. It'll already do a kit of the Me 410. I've got one to show you. See what you get inside the box, you money, right here on Gary's stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today, I'm looking inside the box of the ME410 Hornisa or Hornet fighter in one 70 second scale from Italeri. Now, if you're thinking about getting one of these, want to know what's inside, this is very much the video for you. If you've got one in your stash and you want to see one built, best thing for you to do is to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, and you'll be notified of all my future videos as they're released which include the build of this very kit and of course anything you see on the channel that you like please do give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts if you'd like to make a more concrete contribution to the channel you can do that through super thanks by becoming a channel member or by using any of my online partner programs this kit was very kindly donated to the channel by Harry Grant. So Harry, thanks very much for this, mate. Hope you enjoy it. Let's have a look then and see what you get inside the kit of the Messerschmitt 410 Hornisa in one seventy-second scale from Italeri. Here's the slightly old and battered box, nonetheless, of the ME410 Hornisa from Italeri. And nice enough piece of box art. You can tell it's quite old box art with um, it's done in oils or, or acrylics probably because when you look at the signature, you can see the brush strokes in the signature these days. That'll all be just digitally put in. Um, kit number 074, 172nd scale. So it's here decals for three versions and there's no figure, only one model included. Don't know why they had to say there's only one model, maybe because there's two on the front, I don't know, and they just didn't want people to be confused. But there we go. One kit of the ME410 in one seventy second scale. On this side, there's a quick sort of hit commentary on the aircraft in six languages. Yeah, six British, Italian, German, French, Dutch, and Spanish. And on the other side is a picture of one of the schemes and a sort of representation of what the decal sheet looks like that's the whole of the decal sheet right there on the back there are the other two schemes that are suggested for the kit there's some general instructions here it's for people 14 years and over that normally means uh resin or f and or photo etch parts um, this incident is why Airfix don't, allegedly why Airfix don't include photo etch in their kits is they would have to say it's for 14 and over, not 8 and over. And they have the call outs for the colours. They have the Italeri acrylic references here, but they do have all the RLM references. And of course, you can convert them quite straightforwardly. OK, let's see what we've got inside the box. Right, here we have the instruction sheet. Have a look at that later. We have the bag of the parts. Um, it looks like two grey plastic sprues and one clear plastic sprue we'll have a look at. Later, there's that aforementioned decal sheet. And I do have a masking set that I've purchased separately for this because that's what I do these days because I spray things. So let's have a look at those in more detail. So this is frame A, the 
fuselage halves, cockpit de um, tubs and details, seats, propellers, prop boss, undercarriage and wheels. There's a lot on each of these frames because there's only two of them. But there we go. That's frame A anyway. And frame B basically is everything else. So wing, top and bottom, the um, tail tailplanes tailplanes horizontal stabilizers engine nacelles bottom of the bomb bay if you're not having an open bomb bay some um, one of the aircraft i'm, I'm not having a, an open bomb bay on my one um and a few bits and pieces of weaponry as well but otherwise mainly the wings frame c is the transparency you can see here that the main cockpit frame comes in two pieces um uh, i'm going to guess hazard a guess that's that, that's because to mold it in one piece would have been needed a different type of mold one with a, a slide frame on it so that becomes a lot more expensive a lot more tricky um, so that's going to be interesting to put all that together windshield and a couple of other bits and pieces as well we have a look at some of the molding here there's bits bits and pieces of flash around here for us to get rid of nothing that looks too terrible though um, they have molded in these aerials at the bottom and uh, that kind of causes problems sometimes they can very easily get broken but we'll see we'll, we'll do our very best not to break them the mold lines are you know they're, they're okay they're not too big they're not too deep um there's not much sort of detail in some of these i'm sure these have some sort of riveting around them and you know what i'm not going to be doing that myself i'm going to just build it pretty much as it is but it's okay it's nice enough that it'll, it'll, it'll take some detailing that's fine um yeah it's not in bad shape at all this was a 1999 tool originally um that was then subsequently re-released so it's actually not doing too bad the cockpit interior i can't remember off the top of my head if we get instruments in here i don't think we do um in the kit so i can these are these are tall enough to be brush painted over which will be fantastic just pick them up just for a bit of visibility and likewise, this radio um, block at the back here, we can go over those with, the, with some brush painting and, and highlighting, and that will be fine. Those will work grand. Um, rest of the parts, yeah, they seem okay, actually. The mouldings look clean enough. Um, these feed gates on the wheels are quite big, so you know, we'll have to lose those, sand those down. But nothing major. The undercarriage parts look very clean indeed, actually. Not a trouble at all with them. Very good. Likewise, on the wings, um, nowadays there'll be a lot more rivet detail around here and, and all these panels and these panels would have um, fasteners on them and stuff like that. But it's not the end of the world. This is a relatively straightforward kit, which is why I'm building it. This is the, the radiator exhaust here uh, the ailerons are built in so this is like a one-piece wing um, feed gate right in the middle of the wing which is always annoying but there's only the one on this so it's not too bad um, on the lower wing same thing on the lower wing feed gate right in the middle of the leading edge but we can get rid of it these are big old holes I suspect those are for the mass balances for the ailerons that's a big holes Interestingly, the um, wheel bay detail is either up or down. When it's down, a lot of the wheel bay was actually covered back up again. So there's only a small area there for the undercarriage to poke through, which is actually quite nice. And again, the panel lines, are, they're a bit basic, but they're there and they're clean. Just not hugely over detailed but that's fine for this kit i think again canopy pieces um very annoying that they're in two halves but there we go um, i've done another kit recently where the the uh, canopy parts are in two halves and it was terrible it was a real pain anyway we're hoping this is better one thing i should point out remember this is a a 1999 kit it does have the polystyrene recycling symbol in the uk now that there would be a six there because it's um, polystyrene is a class six plastic 
But even in 1999, Italeri were pointing out actually polystyrene is recyclable. That's pretty cool, actually. That's pretty good. Uh, it's the uh, windshield. And there are a lot of canopy parts, so a lot of bits to the canopy. So unless you're really good at masking or post painting uh, canopies, I really strongly suggest a mask set for it. But the plastic is clear, there's no, can't see any bubbles in the actual frame, maybe a tiny one there, which is good because if there's bubbles in it, that there's, that suggests there may be a bit of flow issue or something like that because this is pure polystyrene, there's no flow additives and things like that into this. So this is a good test of how good the plastic actually is. And there are no air bubbles in the feeders, feed frame. That's very, very good. The instruction leaflet is fairly basic. No, just black and white print. No reason why you necessarily need more than that. The information that's on the side of the box is repeated here as well, just in case you want to know. There's a frame map here, which is excellent. And the paint callouts here are just in the actual like proper names the RLM names, um, an FS reference, and the Italeri's own paint. If you want to know more than that, then I'm afraid you're going to have to go and have a look online. But to be fair, um, RLM2 grey is easy to go flat black, flat white, gum metal, rust, Euro 1 dark green. I'm not sure what that is, but we can pretty much find that out, and it's not going to be anything terrible, and silver. So it's not a lot of difficulty in getting these colours. And the rest are pretty, are absolutely standard Luftwaffe colours that are very easily obtainable. The instructions themselves are, yeah, they're fine. They're basic, but then it's a very basic kit. But they are clear, which is a good thing. Um, there are occasionally different versions of the aircraft that need different things. Um, holes that need to be drilled here if you're putting on the, the rocket packs or the things like that underneath fuel tanks or whatever go on there there's not a lot to this kit to be perfectly honest and i'm quite happy about that because i can do with a kit that's not too complex if you are doing the the interior bombay there's a collection of bombs as well that we can use as i said i'm not doing that so um i might put these these rockets on underneath though because they look pretty groovy because i'm doing version b there, there are the paint schemes here uh, this, this, you know, are pretty straightforward. Um, flat black, the RLM seventy, um, black green, dark green RLM seventy one, and light blue RLM sixty five. These are all very standard paints. If you do any kind of Luftwaffe work, you will probably have these already, and they're easy to get from all the paint manufacturers. Really straightforward. Um, same on scheme b which is what i'm doing and scheme c has some slightly different there's gray green rm74 there's gray violet rm75 and light blue rm76 again absolutely standard world war ii colors um i did a an me163 for example and that had these, these exact same colors um and that's got the mottling on the camouflage which a lot of people like to do as well so three very straightforward simple schemes not too many decals no 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 tons of um, stencils or anything like that it is very straightforward very i'm going to say basic but basic in a good way i think then there's a decal sheet printed in italy by Bukinasso. um they do some actually really nice ones i think they still do them for Italeri, so things like the Sterling and all that, I think have the same company still. They're nice, nice enough decals. They're not up to the standard of someone like Cartograph, if I'm being honest. And these are probably 1990s, late 1990s. So I don't imagine they had them redesigned and reprinted for a second production run. But anyway, uh, German crosses, simple, basic uh, sets of stencils there, and then individual ones for the a b and c versions um the a version has the spiral on the spinner that's there as a 
they're cool as well. Um, yep, yeah, very simple, very straightforward, really should not take long to do. And then finally, if we have a look with our standard yardstick, the half millimeter uh, propelling pencil lead, you can see they're okay. Um, they're not readable, but then they probably wouldn't be by most manufacturers that are quite that size. It's had a, sort of a suggestion that the registration is not absolutely perfect with that red cross being slightly off center and also the um, white hair being slightly off center. I think they've done the colors here by white or white base and then overprinting. And I suspect it's the red channel that's off because that really should be a bit more central. The black channel looks kind of okay. The yellow channel looks all right. It looks like the red channel here is very slightly off. Fortunately, there's very, very little in red on here. So that's not a major issue. There it is then. A relatively uncomplicated looking kit, but, you know, it looks fine to me. Um, the only thing I'm a bit concerned about is the canopy, but I'm sure we can get around that. Everything else looks absolutely fine. It should make a really interesting model of quite an interesting plane. So let's see how we get on. We'll find that out on the build video, which will be coming up soon. Best way to know when it is actually published is to subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell and you'll be notified of all my future content as it is published. And of course, anything you like on my channel, please give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hope to see you again soon on the channel. Take very good care now and goodbye.